40 to 60 percent, depending on you know where you stand. Um, and um, I've heard more, more people shocked by the by the percentage, even more than the number. Okay, um, the percentage of how it went up is one thing. The number of how the actual taxes will be affected is another. But the value of your property is what affects all of that. So we're going to make this. Uh, I think fairly streamlined, easy, and any questions you have, feel free to interrupt. All right, so we're here to answer questions. That is me. That's, just want to point that out. Okay, and my bride right over there, Krista, we've been doing this for 22 years now. And uh, we uh, have learned to stay in our lane. So, when it comes to that, we want to make sure that we're answering the right questions for you from the real estate side, but that's also why I have Michelle here um, on the lending side. So the four things we're going to talk about are what are property taxes, why they go up so much so quickly, what does this mean to you as the individual, and what can you do about it. So let's start with the first one. What are property taxes and value assessments? So how many people got a letter in the mail with, you know, a number that uh, showed their home worth enough to where if you sell, you can retire. <laughs> okay. okay. The actual definition of valuation it, um, and assessment is created by this entire piece here. But ultimately, what it boils down to, the value of what the local entity, whether it be a metro district, a county government, a city government, determines they your home's value, and the assessment is the um, amount of um, taxes based on the value that they place on it. So when we look at it, it happens every, every couple of years. Quick background, um, I'm sure most of you already know this, happens every two years. Really, they look at the last year and a half for this time frame. Now, this time frame is a two-year period from uh, July 1, 2020 through June 30th of 2022, okay? Never mind that we're almost in June of 2023. That's the time frame they look at. And they do put a little more weight on the uh, back end of that time frame when they're doing valuations on that. Now, if they can't find uh, appropriate property to kind of value that on, just be aware, they can go back as far as five years. And that is that's just a uh, amount of uh, time frame they allow themselves to try to find what they consider an appropriate value. They're not trying to make your home, you know, exorbitantly overpriced or anything like that. They're trying to determine value, but their model is different than kind of how we work. So, why they go up so much? I read that right off of there. Uh, main reason, we had the biggest increase in recent Colorado history. I don't think there's been a two-year period where we've seen property values and sales happen at such a pace. Do you remember anything even close to the two-year period for, for valuation? No, we were at 20, so, so guys are seeing 20 and 30 percent appreciation. How, so you know, how, how many people were at horse stories of, well, the home was priced at 700, but they paid $100,000 more for it, and they were in a bidding war with 20 other people, and so on and so forth. We all have that friend, that person who, you know, they have to waive appraisal, they waived inspection, they had to put more money down, they borrowed from parents, they had to, you know, clean up the 401k to pay cash, whatever the case may be. We heard all of those horror stories during that time. A home would go on the market, There'd be 40 people lined up and 20 offers within two hours, okay? That caused this huge, huge increase. Now, I don't know if you can see this or not, but the previous two-year period, it went from uh, average price of 510 to 545. About, uh, about uh, what that work out to? About 7.5% increase, okay? But from that time period to the end of that time frame, we're looking at the average price going from 545 to between 727 and 767. Okay, that that is all just for Douglas County median.
price, sales price, okay? That does not take into account neighborhoods that were just inundated with tons of sales. That includes like rural areas where, you know, maybe it was an 800 square foot home on the edge of Franktown that uh, didn't have any complete renovation and cost, you know, 100,000, okay? I'm saying that there's a lot of factors go into this. So this is just median sales price. So we look at that, you know, how, what, how does it affect you? Here's a perfect example. This was given to me by the Douglas County Assessor as an example. He did an entire presentation for our Metro Board, but this I found to be the most telling. 2022, um, with the old tax system, estimated taxes were at $59.79, almost $6,000. The reevaluation took it to $9,000. Okay, easy math, that's 49% right there because of how they did okay. that. Okay, quick question. Yeah. The actual value, that is, if you put your house on the market, that's the market value? So, so when we talk the about assessor. value, they're talk, yeah, they're saying that the county assessor is, is putting the actual value, that's what they're okay. reflecting. So as, what is the assessed value? Why is it like $590,000 yeah. difference? So when you look at, Actual value versus assessed value. Assessed value is what they're, is basically how they take um, the land value and separate it. When, when they're calculating their mill levies and all those pieces, what they're doing is that is actually based on your total mill levy. Okay, that's take that number and you take it times the 66,150 because a mill levy is a percentage. Okay. A mill levy is one one uh, one one hundredth of a percent. Is that correct? And so you take that, you multiply it out. Different areas have different mill levies. Now, like I live in Highlands Ranch, it's eleven point two oh five. Okay. If you live in let's say Sterling Ranch, on the other hand, it is approximately um, I want to say it's like thirty nine point four right now. Because of, the metro because, of, because of the the other stuff they have added in, it's all a matter of the tax. So the total mill levy is including the county, the state, and the um, the district that this loan happens to be located in. So by the time you add all of that in, that's how you calculate your complete tax amount. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Go. So when we look at the estimated taxes at, with this new way it was calculated out, it went up fifty percent basically. Okay, did that home change value by, you know what, three hundred and fifty thousand dollars over the course of a year? No, not at all. But when they take their window and they see the increase in the neighborhood, they they apply that type of increase to the properties, and that's how they come up with their information. How many of you live in Douglas County? Let me ask you that. Okay, a couple of you live in Douglas County. If you go to, there you go. Um, if you go to the assessor website, they're kind enough to have a button on there that says, look at comparable properties. When you click on that, it shows their values for your neighbor's homes. Not what they sold for, but what value they put on. That doesn't make any sense to me. If you sold your home for, let's say $600,000, and I pull it up and it says $750,000. Anybody else see an issue with that? Because I, I do, personally. So, I, uh, the Arapahoe County is a slightly different website, but also gives you a lot of that same information. But they're doing it off of their uh, estimated values, not off actual values. So, what can you do about it? See? Now, we've got to look at what, how does your property present to the county? Is the information accurate? Okay, does it does it give you everything that you're looking for? Is it giving you the right square footage? Is your basement finished or unfinished? Is it saying that you have more bedrooms or bathrooms than what you actually have? Is it you know is it a, a proper representation of your property? And it'll, it'll go down, it'll show you like your previous year's taxes, how much will change, percentage change, so on and so forth. So, how do we find the real value? We can take their word for it, 
and then we're all really happy about the 50% increase on our taxes, right? Or we can actually go in, we can take a look and see what actually sold in your area during that time frame that is comparable to your home. Um, one of the things I've run across a lot are clients that bought homes during that time frame. And I don't know if you've got any phone calls on that recently, yeah. but I get phone calls all the time. Dave, we bought our home in you know 2021 and we spent X and now they're telling us it's worth $200,000 more. I said, do you want me to bring a sign over or you know, I can put a sign in the yard or we can try to figure out what's going on. Ultimately, I tell them, let's submit to the county your purchase contract, your settlement statement, and let's show them that this is what you paid for the property. And if you got an appraisal on your property, let's submit that too. Because then it shows the comparables, it shows the value of the property. It's all a matter of presenting a very lucid and clean argument for the proper value of the property. We all want our homes to be worth one, two, three, five million dollars. But if they're not, then why should we have to pay the taxes on these inflated values? And that's really what it comes down to. That, so, I just want to say that's one of the most open and shut appeal cases we've seen is where they did purchase it during that period of time for X dollars. If you show that, that's that's pretty much your appeal. You don't really have to go as far as to getting more comps and all the other things that other people will have to do if they didn't purchase during that time. Because we are seeing a lot of people that purchased at a lower amount and still the assessed is coming in much higher, even though they're using the comps during the period of time that they purchased. Right. So that's one of the easiest ones to appeal if you have that. Absolutely. Yes. So also, and I don't know if this is further along in your presentation, but if, if let's say it's saying you have three bedrooms and you actually have two or that your number of if bathrooms are off. If you have a lower off, number on bedroom or bathroom count, those are taken into consideration when you're looking at value. Just like if you're buying a four bedroom home versus a three bedroom home, okay? Obviously the four bedroom home is gonna have a higher value when you're buying it. So why wouldn't it have a higher value when they're assessing it or appraising it, okay? So yeah, that's where you want to look, let me do this, on your public record to see how many bedrooms and bathrooms. It's all this, this is like one page of four that are fine for your public record. And accessing your public record is very, very easy. And, so, and especially um, square footage, because like guys, my house is an example. Um, they, for whatever reason, the assessor picked the one highest sale in our whole neighborhood. And it was higher by a lot, by like $300,000. And that's what they put as our value. And our house is one of the smaller in the area, and we're on an open space. But outside of that, this house was the highest in the whole neighborhood. Nothing even sold. Close to it, I think would be with even 200,000, one house. So that's our tax assessed value. It's like that's not accurate. So you use square footage, use all those other things to really narrow down your value. And one other thing is. Using the sale, like comp sales in my area, because it seems, it seems arbitrary. spread across like everywhere, like the average 40%, like they got together yeah. and they're like, hey guys. So you'll, you'll find variations in that, but it feels that way because every market had such a significant increase. That's, that's why it feels like they kind of said, eh, let's just call it game. <laughs> it and so like, like historically, uh, tax assessed value, someone said, what's the difference between that and appraised value? So historically, we're just used to tax assessed value being so much lower than even actual value. So there, you, you've got a combination of issues happening. You have a, an assessor's office who is really delayed and ever really assessing and maybe um, increasing those tax assessed values as they should have for a period of time. So they got lax on that and it was probably way undervalued. And then you had these huge increases for multiple years. It's like they woke up and went, oh my gosh, look at all this money we could be getting. You know, <laughs> went ahead and grabbed the highest sales in every area and then made those values. Right. So does that does that answer? Yeah, I'm just curious if that was the Yeah. No, they, they didn't all get together late at night and go, oh Did, have you <laughs> have it, feels so it, feels feels it feels that way, but no. Yeah. Have you seen any specific counties be higher or is it 
pretty much straight Douglas across. Douglas County, I will tell you, is so far from all of the uh, appeal information that I've pulled for everybody, has been the most off on a regular basis that I've run into. Denver County actually has been fairly close for the most part. Arapahoe County, there are pockets. Some are fairly close, others are, you know, extremely off. Jefferson County, it is almost home to home on how different they are. But generally, Jefferson County has been fairly high as well. Um, but I've seen that's been very peak and valley on, on values for that. Uh, Elder County, actually, looks pretty flat, relatively. I mean, not just physically, but uh, <laughs> So, you can appeal. You can appeal. You gather information. You gather what's sold that matches up with your property. Is, is something that um, I've already helped a lot of people with. And, you know, kind of give them direction on what, you know, how to uh, go about it. There we go. You can appeal up to three times, believe it or not. The first appeal, appeal is generally an online appeal. There's a form, Douglas County, Rocco County, Jeffco, um, Denver, Adams, they all have online appeal process, okay? You need to input your information. You need to make your argument for them as well, okay? It's not just saying, these homes sold, lower my number. You have to tell them why your number should be lower. What goes into that to make it, um, a, you know, a different value than what they have? Um, you need to provide information. You have even six bedrooms, I only have four. Or, you know, you've got my basement square footage as above grade square footage as well. I have, you know, 2,500 square feet, not 5,000 square feet above grade. And then you put all that in, you send it in, and they will get to it. It will take the time because they are all inundated. Completely, completely inundated. One other thing you can do with that is if you do find, you know, you have those comps, you can look at, you can pull it up online, you can see pictures. If those homes are way over improved versus yours, those would be comments you'd want to say. Like, they have, you know, a $50,000 upgraded kitchen. I have an old kitchen, or whatever, the, you know, whatever those. Changes might be so it's You're in the middle of a neighborhood, they right. back up to open space. Right. Those types of things are important. Your basement flooded last week. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can use yeah. any and all of that. The second appeal, if that if that gets denied, then you have until let's see, the first appeal has to be done by July or June. June first or eighth, depending on the count. Yeah, first okay. or the eighth. So say first. So just say first to be safe. Yeah. I know it's Douglas County, just for an example, is the eighth. Where's Jeff go? Jeff goes concurrent. I thought they were going to be Okay. Second appeal. Let's say they deny that. That's okay. You can appeal again. Take all of your paperwork. All you have to do is make a make a very direct, uh, very empirical argument for your property. And you have to do that one in person though, because um, they want to know, if, if they're telling you one thing um, on the rejection of the first appeal, they want to know why did why did they miss something? You, you need to explain to them. If you argue with them, you're gonna lose. If you try to explain it to them, you're, you've got a better chance of making that happen. Let's say that got denied. You can theoretically do a third appeal. However, the third appeal, it usually involves, uh, you need to have, it's a, a legal process, you need to have your attorney present the, uh, the reasoning behind that, okay? Um, and they will have the, the city, the county, the district attorney, whoever, take the information. That way it's considered a little more of an impartial uh, presentation, but that becomes more expensive. And then you have to weigh, is it worth it at that point? Now there's also, something called an abatement. I'm trying to keep track of time, but do you want to explain an abatement? I mean, they have, if, so if you miss the date and you, um, June 8th comes and goes, or whatever your date is, and you decide, shoot, I should have done this, I wish I would have done it, um, then you have to wait until January. 
And at that point, you could do your appeal, and if it's granted, um, you'll get it, you know, it's going to be um, uh, prorated or whatever, but you would want to do that. And what Dave and I talked about is think about people that are, um, if you were going to buy a home now, um, that, that let's just say you were going to buy a home after June, sometime in July, August, September, and the people that you're buying from had not appealed, but their taxes were high, higher than they should have been, then as a purchaser, I think there's some discrepancy. I think you still could go back and abate even as the new buyer, is that right? Correct, but yeah. it's still after the first But it would have to wait till after January, and then you could do that. So at, you know, that's another thing to think about. Obviously, for you, for your home, if you appeal and get your taxes down, that's great for if you ever want to sell your home, right? You're, it makes it more appealing. Um, if you're looking at buying a home and someone didn't do it, you could go back in January and do that. So then you just have to weigh the options on if it's worth it, how much you think you'd save. Um, but that's basically, you'd have to wait that period of time then until January if you didn't do it by June. Yep. So um, ultimately, what it comes down to is do you feel that the number on there for a, when they give you a value, is that number significantly off of what you feel your home is worth even at the peak of the market price? That's, that's the real question you need to ask yourself. And if you're not sure, let's take a look. Let's hold that conversation. Let's go through, that be me, um, Grace Falls. Um, Let's go through, let's take a look at those comparables, okay? Um, I have received a lot of phone calls. I think I've sent out, I've done eight today. 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 Yeah. And I've talked to three of those people, and all three of them, we went through their problems. We, we talked about, you know, well, you know, I didn't finish my basement until this last winter. Okay, well, they're looking at it, they're looking at a finished basement. That's part of your that's part of your argument. That's part of your appeal process. Um, you know, we just did a remodel. When did you do it? Well, we did it. You know, right. You know, late fall. Okay. Then do you have pictures from before? Make that appeal. Put it all in writing. If you don't appeal, it will not change. If you appeal and you turn down, and you feel like you made a valid argument, you made the effort. You have nothing to lose. You have absolutely nothing to lose. Only the opportunity to gain. Uh, you, this is for your benefit. It's not for anybody else's benefit. The the county assessor, Douglas County, like I said, did a presentation, and pop on through. Um, and he he made it very clear. Ours are high. If you have a case, by all means, get it submitted. Okay. And I'm guessing that the other county assessors are probably of similar mindset because they knew this was going to happen in a minute. They started putting those uh, notices together. Yes, sir. So we're in a side world, right? Mm -hmm. Some houses uh, are are uh, are one residential one. Mm -hmm. Some have bad resolution. Some have there's all kinds of different categories. How important is it to go from like, so for us to find another residential rated Are you R1 or R1? R1. R1. So, so we have to find another R1 in that window of time, which mm -hmm. almost everything around us is A1. I would tell you, actually, I would I would forget about the property designation because <coughs> um, because of you the area you live and look for other residences that have sold. They don't need to be necessarily zone R1, but if you've got if we've got others that are A1 that have a have a residence on them and might have to expand that area out and okay. so on and so forth. We can yeah you know, we can by all means take okay. a look at that and we can take a look to see what's available to so make that happen. Right. Yeah. Because ultimately it comes down to like for like. And just because you know I'm an R1, you're an A1. If you know if we're in the same neighborhood and we're similar, we should still be able to compare with each other. So don't don't let zoning stop you from 
from exploring at least the opportunity. If, if it was if it was a marketable a marketability factor, like there are areas where like maybe something like that, even if it was a different uh, you know difference, but if it if it's a difference that makes a marketability difference, you can go and if there's some notes on this, but you can go a little bit outside of that time frame on either side if you have to, if you can show that 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 nothing sold that is comparable to mine. So. To your point, like if they're the same and it's just the zoning, the, the, and there's not a marketability difference, it shouldn't make a difference. But if it does affect the marketability, then you can make an argument for that, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, do you have a recommendation for what to use if we're using the purchase of the home as our appeal? If then, like I said, I would use my contract. Like contract. I, I'd use my contract and my sell, uh, settlement statement. That shows not only did you make a purchase, but they you close. Okay, and that even though that is part of their records, it brings it back to the top. Uh, if, like I said before, if an appraisal was done, I don't think on yours we want to use the appraisal though, because I think that it appraised higher than you purchased at the time. By a lot. I can't remember, but there was yeah, yeah. I think you'd want to do that. You start with the contract and the service settlement. Most of the time, an appraisal. Time, they weren't appraisers weren't putting effort into adding value, so above and beyond. Yeah, theirs was unique um, yeah. because of the, the way that they obtained this property, so I think it did appraise higher. And we can go back and look at that. And did you buy it arm's length or not? Um, arm's length, yeah. same thing. No. Did you buy it from family? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. so that's okay. it. But the names are different, so I don't know how we come up with that. Don't bring up all the points. Is it one to get to pay for the appraisal? It's not going to, unless that number is hugely different, I don't know that there will be a benefit to that because they need to look at that time. Yeah, because they come yeah. back then versus okay. now. And, and appraisers can do that, but they're going to find because they're now physically going to the properties at that point, they're pulling the exact same information that we're able to pull. Do you have a question? Yeah. Well, so I have probably two unique situations maybe one is similar to theirs and then I had a my son bought a home from his grandfather so I think we wouldn't use the appraisal but I think he could go ahead and appeal. he could still show the purchase yeah the, could, just the purchase and, price. and even with it being, but, not being red flag, that's not necessarily a red flag just be aware of it yeah he didn't give him a huge that one he came close to value at the time I mean he gave him something Right, but I but I think then since then, you know, yeah. obviously things change. But, but I you think can my, use the contract of the settlement statement for that one okay. as well. Yeah. And then my my situation is that I built, I had a, did an addition on my home. So you know, I built, I bought my house back in whenever eight or nine years ago, but we put in a substantial addition on it. When? In the last year. Yeah, but it was after that. But it was after. It was after the time. Okay. That's what we were talking okay. about earlier, like with yeah. the uh, so just, you're so still important. using that that window for value. So just because you've done something after, you know, I mean, it works both ways, right? right. Some people's values are lower now. Well, they, they're still using that period of time. Same thing for you. So if, you if you've improved since, you're still going to go back to that time where, where you didn't have that sort of footage. Okay. So then, so that was going to be my question: is what exactly am I looking at if I want to do that? Because even with the addition, which obviously does increase the value of my home, it doesn't do it as much as what they think. Yeah, so. So well, no. Right, but, but you, could, you could argue my square footage at that time was less, my improvements had not taken place, so on and so forth. I mean, see, it's building the argument. Right. It's, it's, not, it's not just saying, I don't agree. It <laughs> is saying, this is why this is incorrect. Right. You know, you, you layer it, you say, square footage is incorrect. Um, the bedroom count, the, you know, you're comparing, like I said, open space to an interior lot, just for example. Um, you're comparing, you know, you're giving my home value when someone just built a brand new home on the next, you know, <coughs> three acre lot next to you that, you know, cost them five million to build. You know, whatever the case may be, look at what, look at the pros and cons and, you know, we can take a look, obviously, but as long as you're honest with yourself and there, you feel that it is off, 
Let's try to find the information. I do. Okay. So after your initial poll, stay, stay, stay in there. Stay in there. Wait. Yeah, don't go to my cat. Read my And it doesn't look, you know, a lot of times these pictures are very old compared to them. This one was done. Yeah. Left her. Yeah, okay. um, but, so let me, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, CPA, correct? That okay. is for correct. The record, yeah. Yeah. For the record, can we have that on the record? Yes. Yeah, right. Okay, quick question before we change sides. Um, you guys might know this. Who do you think, um, tell me who you think has the highest property taxes in the country, name a state, and who has the lowest? Just throw out some ideas and if you can't answer. You can just shout it out. <laughs> what is it? Actually, no. Illinois is pretty bad for property taxes right now. <laughs> Taxes are. 
And so having those lower taxes really does make homes more affordable from a qualifying standpoint. And um, when people come here and they go, oh my God, the house prices are expensive. If they've moved from somewhere where it's maybe cheaper, when they look at the taxes, they might go, oh wow, at the end of the day, my home is actually in a better place. Who said Illinois? I did. I have family in Illinois. Yeah. I didn't know Nebraska was that high. It's so I bad. mean, um, New Hampshire is yeah. super high. Um, yeah. I want to see where they get the average home price, though. Because yeah, because you have a lot of rural, so it's, well, it's definitely house. the average. So it's like and I also think Florida, that's true, but but still, I think it's still trends, you know what I mean? Like Florida, I would have thought would have been a lot higher. We have a house there, and it feels like it just went way up again. Um, so what, so again, what year was reviewed, just to kind of reiterate, and I highlighted it. So what was reviewed from, June, you know, that January 2021 through that June 30th or July 1st, it won't really show up in terms of like you guys paying for it or seeing it until next year, because taxes are paid in arrears in Colorado. So what's gonna be fascinating is, how many in here have an escrow account? They pay their mortgage through an escrow account. So half of you, the majority, or I guess half, we have one on some of our properties. So what happens is, um, if you have an escrow account, even though this new assessed amount just came out in May and you've got your new bill, um, you're not going to see this affecting you until next year. The problem is the way that it's going to affect you. Because they're paid in arrears, there's going to be a period where you're going to have to make up the back and make up the forward. So I was going to give you a couple of tips on that. Um, the assessment process takes place every two years, and it comes out May 1st. But again, you don't really see the effects of that until the following year. So this is just an example. Um, like when you close on a mortgage, and I know we have an underwriter in here, um, so you typically will pay, if you buy a home, you'd pay your first year insurance up front. This is just an estimate at 3,000, it's, it's just hypothetical. And then you'd pay a couple months worth of taxes and insurance to start your escrow account. Um, now this is someone's statement, so let's just say every month, you know, they're paying 567.23 a month, and year to date, they've got 2,700 in their escrow account. Well, next year, um, when this new tax bill, because we've got, we've received the bill, but the investor, their servicer, where they're making their payment, hasn't been billed yet, technically. So when they get the bill, and they go to dip into the savings account to make the payment, they're not gonna have enough money in there, okay? So I don't know how many of you've ever experienced where your, your escrow account has had a shortage, and then all of a sudden your payment goes up. Well, this will be an extreme case, because what's gonna happen is if you're, to Dave's point, some of those examples, and I know we're, us personally, our taxes went up a third. So, you know, they went from like six to nine a year. Um, well, that's $3,000 a year or $250 a month that, I'm, that I now have to make up, right? My new taxes are $250 more a month than what I was paying. So in your mind, you think, well, my payment should only go up $250 a month, right? That's all my payment should go up. No, it's going to go up 500 a month until that back amount is paid. Because what's going to happen is your mortgage company now needs to make up the difference from last year, which they're now paying, you know, for with the new bill, and they have to start collecting at the higher rate for the new year. So you get double whammy. So if you got a tax bill that was higher, even if you're appealing it until you win, until that money is yours. Start putting money aside so that when you get that new tap, that new um, uh, escrow analysis and they want to make these changes, if you can at least pay the shortage, then your payment will only go up the difference of the new amount versus your current, versus having to pay double whammy. Does that make sense? Because I get calls all the time from people going, I don't understand why my escrow, why my payment went up so much. My taxes only went went up this amount, and it's like we have to get the back and the forward, so it's a double wheel. Any questions on that? Well, I'm just, I mean, this might be a simple question. I just don't know the answer to. I actually pay my taxes on my own. I don't keep yeah. my next row and my insurance. But if you wanted to change that, is that that's probably just to stop to that growing? Yeah. Yeah. So there's some rules around it. Um, when you get the mortgage. 
If you have 20% down or more, you can opt out of escrows, and depending on the, the lender, sometimes there's a charge for that, sometimes there's not. If you're already with a servicer and you've been escrowing, as long as you have 20% equity or more in your home and you've been making your payments as agreed, you can petition to have it removed. Um, you typically can. It doesn't mean they have to, but they typically will if you, if you request to do that. And you've been making your payments on time. Uh, so yes. So and I just did a, a I just did an estimate for a guy today, um, and he's like, we were talking about taxes going up, and he goes, yeah, I think I'm not going to escrow. I don't want to deal with this whole like correction again. And so it's really a choice, you know. Um, but again, pro property taxes are paid in arrears, so anything that's being assessed for 23 and will be due in 24. So those tax bills, um, they're reflecting the previous year always, which is sometimes confusing to people. Um, and taxes are due first half in February, second half in June, or you can pay the whole thing in April. It's, you have a choice. So again, based on if you have an escrow account and if your account gets screwed up and you don't win your appeal, uh, or you don't win all of your appeal, you might have to do some finagling there to, to make that escrow account happen. Um, and again, the deadlines to appeal, you know, we talked about this before, but it's the first through the eighth, depending on the, the county you're in, um, and then the last day for the assessor to mail either denying um, would be August 15th, and then you could go back and reappeal. So that's really, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, in terms of appealing, it just comes down to having somebody help you get really good comparable sales that are the most like yours during that period of time. You will see a lot of the assessors have used the highest, not necessarily the most like yours. That's your number one argument, or if you purchase during that time, would be the second argument. And if at the end of the day you don't win, just make sure you're putting money aside to make up that difference for your escrow account. Um, lastly, so Tim is my husband, he's actually back there. And um, he only, I only do forward mortgages, I'm a lender. Um, Dave and I work together a lot and, and Krista. But in terms of like the elderly and the tax changes, um, I think this is really gonna affect people that are elderly and are on fixed income. And so if you know somebody like that and they have equity in their home, um, all Tim does is reverse mortgages and they have a bad rap, but they're really an amazing tool, especially for somebody who change their life. So if you guys know somebody who is elderly and this new tax burden, you know, they were barely making it and now this is really going to put them over, it's really something to think about, um, you know, reach out to us because it's a life-changing tool and especially in a case like this, some of these taxes goes up 3000 a year and that's a big deal. So that's what I have. If you guys have any other questions, um, my, my name is back there and thanks for coming. Or are there any?